Hello everyone, my name is Luke Lombard and I'm the Junior Executive of Special Programs for the Haskane Consulting Club. This is our second video of our first series, which is titled Steps. And today we're specifically going to be talking about the steps that it takes to get a job, an internship, a co-op, and even how to find opportunities once you're already in the workforce. We're thankful today to have one of our alumni, Allison, here with us. And with that, we're gonna start off with the first question and that's just a very simple, who are you and can you tell us a bit about yourself? Awesome, well, thank you so much, Luke, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, super excited to have you involved in HTC. I guess a little bit about myself, my name's Allison, and I am currently working at Accenture as a strategy analyst on their strat team. Um, graduated from the Haskane School of Business, majoring in finance, and was pretty involved in extracurriculars during my university degree. I was involved with HCC, honestly, um, since my second year of university. So it was a great journey. And my previous role at HCC was the president. Prior to that, um, I was the director of finance and operations and also the director of client relations. So I moved around the, the club a little bit and um, continue to be involved and continue to love what the club is doing. So super excited to be here. Yeah, that's great to hear. We always like having alumni that have been involved for multiple years. And I think a lot of our executive team is still like that today. So that's super exciting to hear about your continual involvement and kind of branching off that, your involvement with HCC, your time in university. Could you tell us a little bit more about your club involvement, your extracurriculars? Um, you know, if you had any hobbies even during your time at university? Uh, yeah, just all that different sort of stuff. Yeah, so I think, first off, I'll tell you the objective of the extracurriculars I did. And my main priority was to really find a career that I enjoy and love. And then my second priority was to build that skill set and my resume to align with that. Um, honestly, consulting was one of my main interests as well as banking. But with HCC and the projects that we did, I aligned more with consulting. Um, in regards to my extracurriculars, I did a lot of case competitions. And I felt like case comps were a really great way to showcase your skills, but also develop them in a very condensed time frame. Um, some of the key skills that develop through case comps is, for example, presentation skills, um, problem solving skills, ability to work in a very stressful environment. And then through that, even though it was a little bit more short and a little bit more presentation style, using those skills within the Haskin Consulting Club and actually utilizing it within like local projects for actual businesses for nonprofits and working with real clients. So those are my two main extracurriculars. Um, but in regards to my hobbies, I, I really try to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So um, being active, um, working out a lot, playing, playing like sports or going snowboarding um, and hiking would be my other things. And then again, hanging out with my, my loved ones is also another priority I have as well as eating probably. So <laughs> I guess that's my third hobby, um, trying new restaurants and um, recipes. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that's great. We always like to hear about people who still are able to hold those hobbies while they're being successful at school. Uh, I think mm -hmm. at the end, we'll touch on a little bit of, you know, mental health and stuff, but we really think that's super important as a club. Uh, and also I think as a university, we're moving towards a better reality of that really. And just kind of following up with something that you had said about finding your path through these clubs, I think there's a big confusion among our members and our students that, you know, you find your career passions through school. But did you, in fact, maybe find that through clubs like HCC, uh, you, in fact, figured out what you wanted to do and actually ended up finding the job that you wanted to be a part of? Yeah, so um, that's a really good question, actually. Um, I guess I did mention I majored in finance. So the first career I really wanted to focus on was like something in banking within the banking industry, like investment banking, for example, right? Um, and that was initially what I was really focused on. So it's okay to pivot and okay to decide that you actually don't want to do that. And through experiences such as uh, HCC, it's not only um, the experience that you're getting, like the pro bono consulting clubs that we do, but also meeting other people and meeting and learning about what they want to do and what they are passionate about, right? So for example, our first president, he, his name's Daniel, and he loves investment banking. But when I learned about his career path and what he had to do to get there, I was like, is this for me or not? So it's almost like you're utilizing that time for yourself, but then you're also able to 
connect with people who are kind of trying to figure out what they want to do and you can learn from their lessons as well. Um, so that would be my answer to that. So honestly, I think HEC is good in terms of that. Um, and then the second thing is you're able to, to meet like professionals within the networking events, right? Um, and these projects and like um, these extra like workshops that you do. So being mindful of, you know, using that time and asking good questions and being critical about whether or not you see yourself in their shoes in a couple of years. Yeah, no, for sure. That's a super good way to put it kind of imagining yourself. Uh, no, I think a lot of people have a great takeaway with that. And that kind of leads us to into our second question. Um, you know, you've told us what you've done in university. You said that you had this original career path. Can you tell us about a, uh, a little bit about what you did in university as far as jobs goes? Uh, I know you said you worked a little bit in banking, um, but then, you know, I know you moved around a lot, maybe at a co-op position. Could you just tell us about that and really how you ended up getting there? Yeah, um, so just some context. My first internship was at Tangerine, which is a digital bank out in Toronto, and they got bought out by Scotia Bank. So they're the digital bank within Scotia. Um, and then my second job was at Deloitte in Consulting, and I ended up um, at Accenture in Strategy Consulting. So definitely moved around. Um, and I think the first advice I'm going to start from years one and two is to don't be afraid to start networking and applying to jobs right away. Um, the takeaway from that is I remember in my, the end of my first year towards my second year, I was applying for jobs like left and right. Like every other week I was sending in a job application. Um, and within all those times, maybe I got like, for example, I, I was applying to like 30 jobs and within the 30 jobs that I got, I only got like 10 or 15 interviews and within 10 or 15 interviews, like nine of them are like nine out of the 10 were no's. So um, rejection is something that you have to get used to, but you might as well get used to it early so that you can grow from those failures and learn quickly and then pivot, right? Um, so my two advice there is to really start networking and really have grit and, you know, don't be so hard on yourself if you have no's in the beginning, because that just means you're one step closer to that yes, right? Yeah, no, for sure. That's a, I think a great way to put it, honestly. Couldn't uh, really said it better myself. Uh, I definitely think, especially right now, a lot of people are facing that. Like, there's a lot of rejection going around, especially with the pandemic. Uh, you bring up a lot about networking and the importance of it. And sometimes I feel like people don't think it's necessary for a summer internship or for a co-op position. But could you talk a little bit about to the fact of how you had to network in university to get those part-time positions? Yeah, um, that's a good question. And this is probably going to sound really cliche. I'm pretty sure many people have already told you this, but sometimes it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And building that network genuinely is very important. So my advice for that is build the network and build those relationships when you actually don't need them yet, because that's authentic relationships, right? Versus when you're really looking for a job and you're messaging everyone, oh, are you looking for someone, blah, blah, blah. It's not as genuine, it's a little bit more forced. But if you were able to do that within the first and second year, um, a lot of the recruiters and all of the people at the firm have known you for a long time and they're willing to vouch for you a lot more. Um, in addition to that, I think um, the second thing with the importance of networking and especially during this time, especially being virtual, is just being um, a little bit more focused in how you're networking. So making sure that your coffee chats are maybe not an hour long, but 30 minutes to 15 minutes, right? Like, I know I'm getting like at our firm, there's so many meetings and sometimes like half of your day goes into coffee chats and you're super burnt out. Um, so being tactful about it, setting it a little bit shorter and then, um, you know, making sure that you have good questions when you're starting to network within that. Yeah, no, again, I, I completely agree. Uh, even in the past month, myself and a few of my friends have reached out to several individuals with no response. And yeah. the blame is not on them, of course, but just because I think that they often get, like you said, basically bombarded with people who ask very general questions, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and clearly are just copied and pasted. So that's really good to have, you know, specific questions and have focused meetings. Uh, and yeah, I really hope that our members can take away from that, especially at this time. And so we've talked a little bit about your, your internship experience, your experience at school, uh, a little bit about your networking, and then 
thinking about all that, I suppose, which is a lot to take on, um, how did you really take the steps to getting the position that you're in today? Yeah, that's a really good question. And um, I guess one point in, in your comment there is, please don't, please don't get too hurt. I'm pretty sure that they haven't had a chance to look at your emails. And when they do, don't respond to that. Don't take it personally. It's probably because they have like a billion emails and they didn't see it, not because they don't want to, right? Um, and then just to your question again, in terms of the steps to get that summer role, is obviously first step is be engaged, attend these networking events, um, make sure that you're building like connections, asking for contacts. The second thing is getting involved. So for example, joining clubs like the Husky Consulting Club, joining like the student council within school and um, doing that right away so that you can connect with like-minded people, but also build that skill set, right? Um, I think my advice here is that when you are applying for a job, there is kind of four key things that a recruiter and a firm or a company is looking for. And those four things are your leadership skills, um, your previous work experience, um, whether or not you fit their culture. And then this third, the fourth thing is your ability to show that you can learn quickly. And that can be through your GPA or that can be through um, external projects or capstone or case comps, right? It doesn't have to be just your GPA, but it, that could be one of the ways you show that agility to learn. Um, so using these four pillars, really focusing your, your time on how are you going to develop these areas. Like if you're joining a club, are you taking a leadership role? Um, if you're joining a pro bono project with the Haskin Consulting Club, are you taking lead in one of the work streams um, and things like that, right? And within work experience, I know it's going to be, it's tough because it's like what comes first, the chicken or the egg, and they're looking for experience, but you're a university student. Um, I think volunteering your time and job shadowing is also a good alternative to do. Um, for example, helping startups, right, um, within the innovation community within Calgary, that's a good way to get experience. Um, and not being so picky about your first job, because again, your first job might not be your dream job, but really being open-minded to being, to doing that job well. Yeah, no, for sure. I think uh, hopefully everyone understands that and the four pillars was definitely great advice something that I honestly haven't heard before so yeah. I think if no one else does I'll at least take something away from that <laughs> but yeah. uh speaking on that you say you know not everyone's going to get their dream job right off the start then how can you talk to people finding and looking for new opportunities when they're in the job place so what I mean by this is for example yourself you know you have a full-time position how can you look for other opportunities and grow within your firm even once you already have that full-time position? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. And I think the advice I have for that is a lot, a lot of the times, even this, this goes with myself and within like my last year of university, I was super set on like, this is my dream job. I really want this job, right? Um, but now with the COVID situation, with the pandemic, with how competitive the landscape is, you have to be flexible that you might not be there right away and you can get there in the future. Um, and to be grateful for the opportunities that you do have, right? So I think within, to answer the first question, within looking during, during your, like you have a full-time job, but you want to shift gears. Um, my two advice there is first off, if you're going to sign for a company and start full-time for a company, my advice is to at least try your best within like one to two years of being there and being open-minded about your, your career there, right? Because you don't want to do something half-assed if you're already committed to it. Um, pardon my language. <laughs> and then the second thing is be super transparent within. So after you do, you know, that first year, you've shown that you're a great employee, you've shown like you've learned a lot within that job role. The second thing is to start looking elsewhere and being open about what you're looking for. For example, oh, like now I want to shift gears, I'm thinking of going to finance, I'm thinking of going into this community, um, being open minded about that and start like continuing to build your network outside of your job and making it a little bit less um, like you're networking to find a job, but just networking to learn more about people's positions. And I think if you keep doing that, then when the opportunity comes up to kind of shift gears, you can do that. Um, a second thing that's a little bit more tactical that some people do is 
uh, they go back for school and they do their MBA and then they use that as their shift, right? Um, you can do that as well. So I guess the theme is to keep networking, um, be open-minded about learning, and then um, consider almost a post-graduation degree to shift that career. Um, but yeah, yeah, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> I kind of yeah. went on like <laughs> into a rabbit hole, but. No, for sure. I think that provides lots of different opportunities and possibilities for people to continue to grow. Um, that isn't just, you know, go and get your MBA and then you can go somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, there's really many ways you can go about that. And I think that's, that's a great thing for people to have that many, uh, a variety of choice, I guess. And that kind of brings us a little bit to the end of our professional question period um, and talking about jobs. I'm not sure if you have any last tips or tricks to comment on. Uh, if not, we can just hop into the last question. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. Let me think about tips and tricks. I think one thing I didn't mention was um, the reason why you want to do co-ops and summer internships. And I guess the first reason is to build that work experience so that you can get your dream job once you look for full time. Um, but the second thing is for you to learn whether or not you even like that job, right? Um, that was my big thing and my big takeaway is that if you use your summer internships and your co-ops, you can almost test jobs before you fully commit for the year or two years um, after you graduate. And the four months will allow you to like learn so much, like test whether or not you like that company, whether or not you like that culture, whether or not you even like that industry, right? And allow you to shift your focus in the next year so that you can do better and be towards your goals. Um, and then, yeah, again, my second advice is don't be too hard on yourself and don't take failure as like a permanent thing within whether or not you get your dream job or whether or not you get like just a job in general because it is uh it is a tough environment right now but like be positive and continue to believe in yourself and then you'll eventually get there um and one of my favorite quotes to that is that you know you will always accomplish your goals maybe not at the time you want it but you will get there eventually so as long as you have that mindset um and you believe in yourself and you learn from your failures um, I believe that anyone can do it. So, Yeah, that's very encouraging. I think a lot of people need to hear that right now. And I think that's something really impactful coming from someone in your position. So mm -hmm. I think on behalf of everyone, we appreciate those last few words. And of course, all of your advice that you've already given. And uh, like I said, now we're kind of just moving into the last and final question, which is going back to that mental health piece that we talked about before. Uh, of course, as you know, everything is completely virtual. Uh, of course, this is virtual, so that's clear. But mm -hmm. we're having a lot of trouble with students and I'm sure with employees going through this transition. And what have you really found to be helpful during this time, um, being online all the time and not really getting to have that human interaction? Yeah, I think mental health is such a huge thing. Um, and I do agree. I think students are feeling the stress right now. And even employees who are working from home, from home um, at our firm, we talk a lot about mental health and that's one of our key values and key transparencies that we try to do. Um, and one thing that we have at our firm that I really love and I, I really resonate with is we have this thing called truly human aspects. Um, and that is basically focusing in on um, understanding that everybody is truly human and everybody has lives and have uncertainties have fears and anxieties and to be transparent and open about that and be supportive in that um, it's not just you know Luke you're not just someone over the camera you're actually a real person and when you move into this virtual environment it's so hard to remember that because if you're just typing and you're just messaging on ping and you don't have that human interaction right um, but to really focus on that mental health, we kind of, I think about this in four, four pillars as well. Um, I like thinking about things and themes and stuff like that. So uh, my mental health considers um, my heart, my brain, my, my physical health, as well as my spiritual health. Um, and I look at all these four pillars and every single week I kind of do like a self check. I take a step back and I think about this week and I'm like, hey, like, have I helped or stimulated my heart? Like, am I seeing my loved ones? Am I um, showing the, my loved ones I care? Am I feeling loved, right? Or doing the things that I'm, I love, like my hobbies and stuff. 
The second thing is, am I stimulating my brain? Am I learning a lot in my job roles? Am I taking the time to read more books, reading articles, asking good questions, and having um, some type of growth in that week? Um, and then the third thing is that physical aspect. I know everyone's working from home, so it's a little bit tough to, to you know, go to the gym and go work out, but am I just taking five minutes to stretch in the morning or 15 minutes to go for a walk? Um, and even during sometimes like a network call, my some of my colleagues would be like, hey, I'm walking my dog right now. Let's just go for a walk and talk on the phone. Um, and that's one thing that you can do. And then the fourth thing is your spirituality. And your spirituality is almost your purpose. So asking whether or not you're, you're you know, doing something you're really passionate about, whether or not it's like, you know, being, you know, focus on yoga or your religion or meditating, things like that to really just hone in and be present. And I think those are the four things everyone should focus in on and not just prioritize one thing because each pillar is kind of like according to your health, right? If you're too focused on doing the things you love, but you're not focusing on your, you know, physical health, then one of the, the pillars are going to be shorter and your house is going to, your house is going to tumble. Um, so keeping that balance and then being transparent. Um, and then going back to that truly human aspect, like the one thing we love about our firm is that when you're feeling tired and stressed, you can just be like, hey, I really need a truly human moment. I think I'm going to log off and kind of just take care of myself for this next hour. Is that okay? Um, and the moment everyone hears that, they, they are so supportive in that. And I think that's the transparency and communication that students should build with their professors, with the extracurricular clubs that they're doing, with their project teams and class classmates, right? Um, to have that transparency so people can start supporting you and then being willing to understand that everyone else is also human. So checking up on other people as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. That's great. It's kind of ironic because you talk about these four pillars and you're saying how, you know, you need structure in your mental health. And I feel like now more than ever, especially from a university student perspective, everyone is just so unorganized. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know a lot of my friends will, you know, show up 25 minutes late to a Zoom lecture, forget the time mm -hmm. change. So I think um, really putting in a, that perspective as something that should be structured is really good advice. And then also exactly like you say, you know, seeing people over camera, I actually have a professor who said, it's been really challenging for me to check up on my students because yeah. first of all, half of them don't have their camera on. And second of all, the other half that do, you know, you really can't tell that much uh, just by seeing someone for, you know, an hour a day over Zoom. So I think that's really great advice and very relatable from a student's perspective. Yeah, um, I'm curious to know, like, like, what are you doing to balance your time or like, what are your hobbies and stuff too? Because I'd love to learn more about you on this call. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think as far as I go and as far as a lot of other university students go, uh, especially a lot of the members of HCC, we've really taken this time to just get really involved. Uh, of course, we can do everything from online. So I actually live in Regina right now. I don't even live in Calgary. Uh, so I've been able to go to webinars and I've been able to meet with my teams uh, on a variety of different levels, just because we no longer have to all go to campus together, which I think previously we saw wasn't that challenging until you realize that meeting virtually is just that easy. I've found that that's been a really nice way to, you know, take away from school and kind of step back and enjoy some of the really great things that the business school and U of C has to offer. So that's probably the biggest thing for me and most of the members of HCC. And then of course, another thing is uh, myself being a dorm student last year, it's nice to be home, nice to be around your family. Just like you said, you know, spending time with your loved ones, uh, I think that really does take off a lot of stress for a lot of people as well. So there's definitely different things for different people, but in some ways the virtual environment has been slightly a blessing, I guess you could say for some of us. Uh, it's really from my perspective, just all about, you know, what you do with it. Uh, and I would say that's probably the biggest thing, uh, not to speak for all university students by any means, but yeah, for sure. I think that's uh, kind of my view, I guess. Yeah, and I really like the aspect of you thinking about Zoom and that virtual environment allowing you to do more, because that's a really good point. Like, for example, if you were living at home and you had to 
like transit to university, that's two hours out of your day you're spending on the bus and on the train, right? So that why not use those two hours to do other things that you love to go work out or to go read a book or, you know, watch your regard TV shows and things like that or more networking events that's virtual. So um, it's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I think uh, the, definitely the transportation thing plays a huge role in a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, like you said, the time saved, even from, you know, the first five minutes of lectures where the prof isn't quite ready to talk yet, even when you add up all those times throughout the year, really shows you that you can end up doing a few more interesting things, which again, I think all contributes to having a more balanced lifestyle. Yeah, no, a really good point. Um, I'm trying to use those five minutes to almost listen to podcasts sometimes. Like for example, if I'm driving or just like taking a, a minute to take a break. Um, but I think it's having like that diligence to do that as well. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Self-discipline definitely plays a role, um, especially with Zoom lectures, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but other than that, uh, that covers all of our questions for today and that last kind of bonus one that we had, which I think is going to be really valuable for all of our members. And I was just wondering, do you have any closing comments or anything that you want to mention just before we wrap up? Um, yeah, I think one closing thing is, you know, get involved in HC. You're going to love it. Um, it's a super engaging club. And if you want to you know, do more in it, then just put up your hands. And I think the executive team will always say yes to it. So continue to do that, continue to have a positive aspect on life. And um, if anyone ever has any questions, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. Um, I would love to connect. And if I don't respond right away, I'm definitely getting to it. Um, just maybe, maybe I just haven't seen it. So definitely open to that and um, hopefully we can continue to have these chats and this communication. But I think this, this Zoom meeting, webinar, webcam thing is awesome. So keep up the great work. That's awesome, yeah. I'm sure all of our members really appreciate that when our alumni and our executive team or whoever that is are willing to meet. So thank you for that. And just with that, you know, we really wanna thank you for being here today and taking the time. Uh, and we really hope that all of our members can take away from this. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Luke. And thanks for inviting me to this. Thanks. Bye.